Hello again, and thanks so much for joining us for this Monday's edition of Alaska Weather on the 28th day of March, 2022. I'm David Percy, a meteorologist with the National Weather Service, and I'll be hosting today's show. Up first on the hazardous weather graphic, we've got uh, a winter storm watch out for the western Arctic coast, and that's for Tuesday night through Wednesday, and that's for uh, blowing snow and blizzard conditions at times. Expecting winds there to gust out of the east up to 40 to 45 miles an hour. Again, that kicks into effect. Uh, it's a watch for Tuesday night through Wednesday. And then the yellow shaded area there for the eastern north slope, eastern Arctic coast, that's winter weather advisory that remains out until midnight tonight. And that's for uh, winds gusting 35 to 40 miles an hour, creating blowing snow and uh, lower visibilities down to a half mile or less at times. But that should uh, end, uh, scheduled to end at midnight, or you know they'll kick it out longer. And from there, we've got a uh, forecast uh, transfer of, of forecast office responsibilities that goes to effect on the 29th of March, which is tomorrow. So forecasts that were written by Anchorage will go to Fairbanks, and those include uh, the Cantwell, Denali area. I don't know if that includes uh, the igloo or not if it goes that far south but that igloo will be right on the edge of that and so that area will now be written by Fairbanks as opposed to Anchorage and then also Hooper Bay and Chivak uh, I think I'm pronouncing that right Chivak uh, and Hooper Bay anyway those will also go to the Fairbanks area from Anchorage and then from Fairbanks to Anchorage uh, forecasts written by Fairbanks <laughs> will be written by Anchorage or crafted, uh, Mintasta Lake and Shasana there, Eastern Alaska Range, that's uh, I guess that uh, kind of purplish area, I think, colored there, kind of a narrow right along the boundary there, they got the colors there on the map. Uh, I guess the uh, green is going to the Fairbanks area and that uh, pinkish purplish color goes to Anchorage. Anyway, that's again going to, from Fairbanks to Anchorage, Mintasta Lake, and Shasana. And then there's a new marine zone that will be called, uh, labeled 201, Edelin Strait to Dahl Point, and that's going to be handled by the Fairbanks office. For more detailed information on these uh, transfers, you can find them in the news headlines at the top of the National Weather Service Anchorage and Fairbanks web pages. So from that, moving on to satellite pictures, time lapse of about 12 photos here, or 10, 10 photos time lapsed. And you can see the front weakening, breaking apart as it rolls northward into interior Alaska, holding together a little bit better as it pushes into the southeast coast. The main low center, uh, south of Kodiak Island, and then the uh, strong northerly flow on the back side of that continuing today, but uh, not all that uh, strong. We've got northerly winds through the Bering Strait, Tin City up to 48 miles an hour. And then uh, southeast winds there on the northeast side of the low across the Barren Islands today into Kamishak Bay, Augustine Island, gusting up to about 50 miles an hour. And let's see, False Pass, northwest winds there, Alaska Peninsula gusts 55 miles per hour, down from stronger gusts overnight last night. And also winds coming down there over the Fox Islands area. And pretty light wind day today for the Pribilofs. And for the eastern Arctic coast, let's see, winds gusted 30 to 50 miles an hour today out of the east. That's going to start lighting up, and they'll be on the increase for the west side there. And again, that winter storm warning for the western Arctic coast kicks into effect tomorrow night. Now you can see a uh, pretty well-defined frontal system out over the western Aleutians, western Bering Sea. Uh, pushing eastward. It too, though, breaking up as it tries to push eastward into a pretty sharp and strong ridge of high pressure west of the Pribilofs. But that bringing some uh, wind and increased wind and rain this afternoon into the uh, mainly the ADAC area. And then another band of uh, snow and rain showers, colder air with coming into the Shimia area. 
on the chart, uh, there's that low southwest Kodiak Island, more or less there, with uh, fairly good rainfall amounts, about 1.88 inches, 24-hour rainfall amount of Kodiak. Uh, of course, yesterday, that uh, yet last evening, that fell as snow, wet snow, and then mostly rain today, uh, continuing to fall through the afternoon uh, today, but not quite as heavy as it was. Uh, that was where the heaviest rainfall amounts were. The, uh, Upslope areas of the Aleutian Range and uh, east side of Kodiak Island, Akiok picking up about two-thirds of an inch of rain 24 hours. Otherwise, Portage picked up about seven-tenths of an inch. And then Yakutat had two to three inches of snow today. And showers on the increase there along the north coast of the Panhandle, otherwise staying dry down to the south. And the winds uh, coming down there as that ridge of high pressure narrows and pushes eastward a little bit, so less gradient, lighter winds for the Fox Islands and pretty light winds for the Pribilofs, uh, picking up to 35 knots out of the northeast, a little bit more gradient there for St. Lawrence Island, and again gusting close to 50 miles an hour through the Bering Strait, and kind of breezy over the northern interior, but dry with a lot of uh, clear skies and sunshine today. And the next front there pushing the gale force winds and rain into ADAC, eventually reaching ADAC, but that front will be washing out as it pushes eastward. Kind of a new low forms there north of ADAC tonight. And uh, look for at least minimum gale force winds to move across Atka Island, but uh, not reaching uh, the Nikulski area, although some light precipitation may reach there tonight. And then another round of uh, increased precipitation with the leading edge of the Arctic air coming westward, west-southwest, bringing uh, rain and snow showers, probably changing the snow showers late tonight and tomorrow for the western Aleutians. And that front really washing out uh, as it moves in across southern Alaska there and pressing in toward the southeast coast. Look for uh, periods of rain along the coast. Uh, higher elevations, of course, they'll be mixed with or just plain snow. Scattered snow showers across southern Alaska, kind of a band of uh, moisture of resulting in areas of light snow from eastern Norton Sound through the central interior there, right along the Yukon River Valley, all the way over toward Eagle. And to the north of that, uh, dry conditions and increasing winds for the western Arctic coast, decreasing winds on the east side and looking ahead to tomorrow. Again, windiest conditions now will be on the eastern or the western Arctic coast and uh, still a little breezy on the east side, but not like uh, they'll be less than what they were today, but staying dry with mostly clear skies up that way down into the northern valleys there, uh, south of the Brooks Range. And you pick up the clouds and some scattered snow showers uh, along that trough becomes an area of light snow. Lower Yukon River Valley, Yukon Delta, scattered snow showers, Cusquam Delta, into the southwest mountains. Cusquam Valley, I think, will be basically dry tomorrow, as well as Cook Inlet to sit in the Manuska Valley. Chance of showers along the North Gulf Coast, maybe the Southern Copper River Basin, but the eastern interior looks dry. And rain or snow showers, best chance will be, uh, or periods of rain, southern pan, and with that low approaching the Queen Charlotte's or western Dixon entrance with more intermittent, lighter, and more showery conditions to the north there toward Juneau on up to Haines, Klondike Highway areas, Elfin Cove, scattered showers, Kodiak Island, but light winds, and uh, increasing winds, small craft advisory level winds pushing into the Alaska Peninsula. Could be some gale force gusts possibly there, uh, like around Cold Bay late in the day, but rain and snow, and then unsettled with westerly flow along the Aleutians there just on the south side of that low complex. And for the day on Wednesday, Low rotates north and northwestward, just west of the Pribilof, so that'll bring warmer temperatures back into that area and begin to retreat the ice edge back to the north there with the southerly winds kicking in, milder temperatures, and that front will push into the southwest coast, bringing warmer temperatures with it, with uh, snow changing to rain, especially over Bristol Bay and the Cuscoan Delta. Snow and blowing snow on the increase, St. Lawrence Island, and then the winter storm watch out for the western Arctic coast for blowing snow, winds gusting 40 miles an hour, reducing visibilities there. That same sort of situation might occur over the uh, eastern interior, but not to that extent, but look for increased winds, maybe some snow, additional snow will be quite light though, but that could result in blowing and drifting snow there. Otherwise dry, south central Alaska, risk of some shower activity pushing into southern Cook Inlet late in the day. Lows tonight, uh, 10 to 20 below for the North Slope and Arctic Coast, otherwise in the teens in the interior, 20s to mid-30s, southern Alaska. 
and uh, mid 30s to near 40 for the Panhandle. Highs tomorrow, 40 to 50 for the southeast coast and 40 to 45 south central Alaska, Kenai Peninsula, lower 40s Bristol Bay, near 40 for the Alaska Peninsula and the Aleutians, near 30 for the Perbloffs and highs staying below zero from the North Slope and Arctic Coast and uh, 10 to 20 below or maybe even 25 below for the lows Wednesday morning for the North Slope, mid-teens central interior, upper 20s to lower 30s, southern Alaska in the upper 30s for the pan, it'll follow by highs 45 to 50 for the southeast coast, mid 40s southern Alaska, near zero for the Arctic. And now, aviation weather around Alaska. Flying weather, IFR along the Arctic coast, but the north sloping are pretty good with uh, VFR there. Band of marginal VFR across the upper Yukon Valley and then eastward, actually all the way along the Yukon River, right out to the Delta, northward across the Seward Peninsula, into the Selawik Valley, Buckland, Shishmaref, and all the southwest coast, central eastern Bering Sea, all the Bering Sea and Aleutians, marginal VFR, the band of IFR, progressing eastward to Nikolsky and covering Adak and Atka. IFR band uh, from Kamishak, Kachemak Bays, right up into Resurrection Bay, Prince William Sound, eastern North Gulf Coast, into most of the Panhandle, and for the afternoon. <clears throat> areas of marginal VFR across southern Alaska with some areas of marginal VFR and areas of IFR, especially Togiak Bay, Prince William Sound, and uh, eastern North Gulf Coast into the northern Panhandle, marginal VFR, southern southeast coast. The elongated stretched out band of IFR with that weakening frontal boundary is but the uh, pushing eastward along the Aleutians, spreading into the Alaska Peninsula, and uh, marginal VFR behind that, all the way to the Commodorskis probably, and uh, St. George Island, right on the edge of the IFR zone, St. Paul Marginal, IFR St. Lawrence Island, through the Bering Strait, up along the western Arctic coast, central eastern Arctic coast, north slope Brooks Range, looking pretty good, VFR there, and marginal VFR along the entire stretch of the Yukon River, and most of the uh, Tanana River, as well as uh, northern Kuskokwim Valley. And for the morning Wednesday, IFR, western Arctic coast, IFR, northern Bering Sea, including St. Lawrence Island into the Yukon Delta and most of Norton Sound, although Norton Bay, Nolato Hills in the VFR zone. IFR shifting north of the Pribilofs uh, by Wednesday morning, marginal for the Aleutians, IFR for the Alaska Peninsula, Southwest Interior and Bristol Bay, VFR, across Cook Inlet, Kenai Peninsula, Prince William Sound, all VFR. Some marginal VFR along the Alaska Range there with that zone up across the central interior and some IFR over toward Eagle, maybe as far southwest as uh, China Ridge. Otherwise, IFR, eastern Arctic coast, along the entire panhandle, along the coast, into the southern areas. For the afternoon, IFR, northern southeast coast, marginal to the south, IFR, or marginal VFR, central Alaska range into the upper Tana Valley, 40 mile country, and then Eagle southward across Northway Tok, Nabesna, into the Wrangell Mountains, IFR, Kodiak Island, Togiak Bay along the southwest coast to St. Lawrence Island, right up uh, to Diomede, and IFR on the western Arctic coast, northern Bering Sea, IFR, central southern Bering Sea, and the Aleutians marginal. Passes, and the Tuvigan Adigan, VFR mostly tomorrow, and for Lake Clark and Merrill, occasionally marginal VFR conditions there, occasionally marginal for rainy. Windy, possibly marginal at times throughout the day, especially uh, on the north side. Isabel, marginal VFR. Mintasta, optimistically, call it VFR. Tanita, occasionally marginal, especially on the eastern entrance. And for Portage, IFR to start, hopefully improving to marginal VFR into the afternoon. Chilkoot and White, IFR the entire day. Freezing levels, two to 6,000 feet across uh, Dixon entrance right up into the southern panhandle at the surface along the North Gulf Coast and just north of Bristol Bay, but uh, back down to the Alaska Peninsula. 2,000 feet though nudging up with that uh, frontal boundary ahead of the front in the south-southeast winds, pulling 2,000 foot freezing levels up to Adak and Atka. Icing areas of uh, isolated moderate between six and 15,000 feet. They're pushing across the eastern Aleutians, spreading into the Alaska Peninsula and also uh, considerable moderate areas of pushing into the panhandle between five and 14,000 feet. Take a look at the jet stream, southerly flow across the panhandle at about, uh, I'll call it 75 to 85 knots. 
Otherwise, uh, the main jet well south of uh, the forecast area. <clears throat> and at 9,000 feet, we've got southerlies at 40 knots into the Panhandle, south 35 knots across the lower Yukon River Valley and into the Delta, and southeast 35 knots western Arctic coast. And at 3,000 feet, those pick up western Arctic coast, uh, southeast at 60 knots and 40 to 50 knot winds there across the uh, central and southern Bering Sea, westerly and lighter for the Aleutians, 45 knot winds there over Dixon Entrance, turbulence, light to, isolate, light to isolate a moderate chop, Prince of Wales Island, otherwise considerable moderate chop there, western north slope, western Arctic coast, as well as the Pribilofs on the lee side of the Alaska Peninsula. Welcome to another edition of Alaska Weather Facts. I'm meteorologist Dave Snyder. And joining us once again is our good friend Eric Stevens from GINA, the uh, uh, Geographic Information Network of Alaska. Thanks again for joining us, Eric. We really appreciate it, as always. Happy to be here, Dave. Thanks. And, you know, we're, we're going to ask you some more satellite questions here, but, you know, okay. since you're a regular guest, we, we're going to give you a riddle this time, kind of a, a trick start to the show. Okay. How do you see a polar bear in a snowstorm? Sounds like a challenging question because okay. the polar bear's white and the snowstorm's white. Yeah. How do you do that? Well, in the world of satellite meteorology, uh, you couldn't because um, the spatial resolution of this instrument that we're going to talk about today has 375 meters resolution. And okay. even the most well-fed polar bear will not be 375 meters across. I'm okay with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to run into such a no, creature, a would you? Um, in the satellite meteorology world, the equivalent would be, how do you tell the difference between clouds and then an area that has no clouds but is mm -hmm. covered by snow, right. a piece of ocean that has no clouds but has sea ice. Ah. All three of these are white. The, right. the snow, the clouds, the sea ice, it's all white. So how, using satellite data, can you tell someone where the clouds are and where the clear areas are? This is important for aviators. Right. Uh, mariners want to know uh, in the ocean there, this white stuff, is that sea ice or is that just a cloud? Right. How do we tell the difference? And it turns out, if you look, say, at a picture of Alaska from the springtime, March okay. or April, and it's high noon, so we're getting a lot of sunshine. If you were, ride, if you were riding on a satellite with your human eye, yeah. look down, everything's white. Right. And we've got uh, you know, a picture for, of Alaska from uh, early April, and mm -hmm. we're seeing some of the lower elevations in south central Alaska are melting out, getting some brown ground there. But otherwise, there's a whole lot of white sure. on the image. What areas are cloudy, but what areas are clear and covered by snow or ice? Okay. It turns out that if we leave the visible spectrum behind a little bit, okay. see a satellite has multiple channels in the electric magnetic spectrum that it can look at. Oh, okay. Part of that's okay. visible light, what right. we see as humans, but there's a lot going on at other wavelengths. Mm -hmm. If we add in something that's called near infrared, what we couldn't quite see, but we're getting into that infrared territory, mm -hmm. there's a magical property that oh. we can exploit. Secrets to find. Okay. Oh yeah. This is actually powerful and, and, and almost magical that at a, a slightly longer wavelength when the sun shines down on Alaska mm -hmm. and then it bounces off back to the satellite, at that near infrared wavelength it turns out that snow and ice will absorb that wavelength but uh, liquid water, like liquid droplets in a cloud, mm -hmm. will reflect it back. Okay. And, and that's not the way it works in visible. You know, visible, it just bounces off of all those targets the same. But at near infrared, snow and ice absorbs it, and the liquid will reflect it back. Liquid cloud droplets will do that. Okay. And so an image where everything looks white suddenly becomes colorful. Oh, okay. And the way this recipe works is that the clouds look pink, and the snow-covered ground and the ice-covered ocean look blue. Suddenly now, we're able to see the polar bear in the snowstorm. We're able to see where the clouds are okay. and where the snow is and where the ice is. This is a powerful advantage. Consider the case uh, zooming into the Bering Strait area. Mm -hmm. What if you were asked to brief a pilot who wanted to fly, say, from Kotzebue down to Savunga or Gamble right. and had to fly VFR, visual flight rules, right. so they had to stay out of the clouds? Could you use a satellite image where everything is white to provide that pilot any guidance? It's pretty tricky. Very tricky, yeah. and that's why we have to go to this other recipe where the, the all-white polar bear in the snowstorm becomes more colorful. And now we can tell the pilot, aha, this mm -hmm. is a cloud you want to stay out of, but over here, sure, it looks white in the visible spectrum, right. but what we're doing will show you, oh, this is just snow-covered ground, but it's clear, so you can fly right through there, visual flight rules. Same thing for a mariner, a mariner who might want to uh, 
get down to uh, St. Lawrence Island, say, but mm -hmm. it has to avoid the sea ice, this product has applicability there as well. Wonderful. It's, it's an amazing new technology, so many new channels. Uh, the, the satellite that makes this imagery actually has 22 different channels that it looks at. 22 bands. secret decoder rings. 22 secret decoder rings. Okay. Uh, you know, I liken this to an uh, you know, activity I had in the car when I was growing up. We'd go on long car rides, and we'd do all the work in these activity books to, you know, stay calm, cool, and collected for our parents who were trying to get us across, uh, across the state. But to get the answer, the real answer, you had to apply that red sheet to see mm -hmm. the answer or the secret path or whatever the message was in that activity book to get you onto the next, next page. And it's also like a, a photography filter, right? If you're, if you're taking a lot of pictures, you can apply different colors to see different parts of that image. I mean, that sounds a lot like what you're talking about. Oh, you know it. We, the information is in there all yeah. along. We just have to combine the channels in a way to reveal what's in there. And by the way, you're dating yourself. So you didn't yeah. have an iPad in the back of the car? No, sir. Right? Okay. <laughs> well, we have... Lastly, for dessert, okay. there's a great image of the same kind of recipe. We're looking at South Central Alaska mm -hmm. the first week of January. In Jan first week of January, the sun, even at noon, is really, really low, low on the horizon, right. barely up. And in this image, the fun thing is the shadow of Denali. We can see the shadow oh, of wow. Denali over a, a lower pink cloud deck. Yeah, that's and amazing. Denali at 20,000 feet casts a big shadow. Mm -hmm. So this is another, just for fun, kind of application here. That's oh yeah, th this is called multispectral satellite imagery, and it's the future. And happily, <laughs> the future is now. Oh, that is fascinating. And 22 different secrets that can be revealed from just one satellite tool that's mm -hmm. floating overhead. Mm -hmm. Eric, thanks so much for joining us again. We, we can't wait to have you back and telling us more secrets of satellite technology <laughs> that are passing over us every single day and uh, many times a day mm -hmm. over Alaska and helping us all the way in uh, many different parts of our lives. So thanks so much for joining us again. Well, happy to be here. All right. And thank you for staying with us. We'll be back with a little more weather here in just a few minutes. And of course, we'll have more Alaska weather facts anytime online. And now, marine weather around Alaska. Welcome back. Look for small craft advisories uh, along the central and south coast of the Panhandle. South coast, south 25 knots. The central coast, southeast uh, 25 knots. And the north coast, southeast winds at 20 knots, seas 10 feet. Small craft advisories for uh, Stevens Passage and Clarence Strait for southeast winds at 25 knots. Northern inside waters, lighter winds from the southeast at 15 knots with three foot seas. And for Wednesday, south winds 15 knots for all the inside waters from Lincoln Glacier Bay all the way down toward Dixon Entrance, including Clarence Strait. And then southwest winds 15 to 20 knots uh, along the south coast and south southwest 15 to 20 knots for the north coast. Seas running out there from eight to 11 feet. Prince William Sound, east winds at about 15 knots tomorrow, three foot seas. North Gulf Coast, pretty light wind, southeast at 15 knots, seas around 10 feet, southeast 15 also for the Barren Islands. Kamishak Bay, east winds 15 knots, and Cook Inlet, northeast breeze 10 to 15 knots with three foot seas. For Wednesday, Cook Inlet, north to northeast winds 15 to 20 knots with three to five foot seas. Gale warnings back in the forecast for the Kamishak Bay area. Winds will be out of the east, increasing to 35 knots, with seas building to 11 feet. Barren Islands winds coming up to 30 knots from the southeast, with 7-foot seas. And small craft advisories for the western north gulf, for east winds increasing to 25 knots. Over toward Middleton Island, they'll be out of the south at 20 knots. Prince William Sound, northeast winds 15 knots. Kodiak Island, east-southeast winds tomorrow at 15 knots. Variable 15-knot winds from Sitkanak to Castle Cape. And for the Alaska Peninsula, South to southeast winds 20 to 25 knots, seas 4 to 8 feet. And for Bristol Bay, southeast winds at 10 knots, seas pretty slight at 1 foot. And for Wednesday, small craft advisors for Bristol Bay, winds uh, pick up to 30 knots from the east, otherwise uh, 20 knots southerly winds to the Bering Sea side of the Alaska Peninsula. And uh, from Cape Sarachev to Sitkanak, Winds will be uh, southeast to southwest, 25 to 30 knots. Kodiak Island, east southeast winds at 25 knots. Eastern Aleutians tomorrow, small crowd advisory, southeast winds 30 knots. For the central Aleutians, west southwest winds at 30 knots. 
And from Chitka Island, west at 25, lighter winds from Kiska to Shimia, southwest at about 20 knots, but seas up to 17 feet. And for Wednesday, from Shimia to Kiska, northwest winds, 30 knots, west 25 knot winds from Chitka Island, central Aleutian, southwest, 15 to 20 knots. And for the Fox Islands, uh, south to southwest winds, 10 to 15 knots, seas running 6 to 14 feet. Light variable winds for the Cuscombe Delta Coast tomorrow at 10 knots. Small craft advisories for the Pribilof Islands. East winds 25 knots. Yukon Delta Coast looking at a north wind at 25 knots. Brisk wind advisories for St. Lawrence Island. North winds 25 knots. And for St. Matthew Island, winds will be out of the northeast at 20 knots. And Norton Sound looking at northerlies at 15 knots. For Wednesday, Norton Sound, east winds 20 knots. Northeast winds 25 knots for St. Lawrence Island and brisk, brisk wind advisory is also in the forecast now for the uh, southwest coast. In the case of the Yukon Delta coastline, out of the east at 25 knots, Cuscombe Delta coast southeast of 25. Pribilof Islands, light south winds 15 knots but seas up to about 8 feet and brisk wind advisory is also out for St. Matthew Island for northeast winds at 30 knots. For the eastern Wolverine Sea coast tomorrow, east northeast winds 20 to 25 knots. And then for the central coast, northeast at 20. Western Arctic coast from all the way down to Cape Thompson, northeast winds at 30 knots. Cape Thompson to Wales, north at 25. Then we got gale warnings on Wednesday from uh, Cape Thompson up to, say, Point Lay or so for the western Arctic coast. For east northeast winds, 35 knots. Central Arctic coast, east at 20 and then 10 to 15 knot east winds for the east side. And for tonight, uh, windiest conditions will kind of shift over to the western Arctic coast as winds start to lighten up on the east side. Otherwise, it'll be dry. Northern Kobuk, Koyukuk, Yukon Valleys across the Brooks Range of the North Slope. Chance of snow, though, into the central interior and scattered snow showers over the southwest part of the state, but that'll be a more general area of rain and snow from the North Gulf Coast. The Aleutian Range, Kodiak Island, into the Panhandle. Next front brings gale force winds, rain and snow into the central Aleutians, but that'll weaken on Tuesday. Just small craft advisories reaching the Alaska Peninsula, unsettled for the Aleutians. Rain over the southern Panhandle, scattered showers southern Alaska, dry to the north and breezy western Arctic coast. These forecasts are for planning purposes only. Call 1-800-WX-BRIEF for a formal pre-flight briefing. Always file a flight plan before you go fly. The U.S. Coast Guard Auxiliary urges you to leave a float plan with a friend or the harbor master before you go boating. <laughs>